wasn't here like I normally am. But anywho, this is Glendon Cameron with 30 days to $2,500. It is day 21, which means we only have nine more days left and we're cranking up the intensity. If you've been here since day one, you should give yourself a pat on the back, high five, thumbs up, whatever makes you happy. That's what you need to do because uh, this weekend I was going over some data and I was looking at stuff and I'm just really amazed at how many people have I've, I've already crossed the $2,500 mark and how many people are on the trajectory that they're going to hit $2,500 probably next month since now they've kind of got a handle on the business, got a handle on themselves. So it's a very, very effective course. With that, there's no longer the monthly option. It's only the lifetime option. That's the only thing I'm selling. But I will address that at the end of the course. If you are new, let me give you the rules. I first will do the presentation. If you have a question on something that I said about this presentation, just go ahead and enter the question. And when I come out of the presentation, I will answer the question. And today is going to be a lot of fun. It really is. So if you don't have a pen or paper, you know, grab one real quick or use your phone, use your iPad. So with that, let's rock and roll. As I said, you need a sheet of paper, pen and pencil. I'm going to go over it again. And this was day 20. The task of day 20 was to start a business in 24 hours from scratch to start a new business of something you've never done before that should have been on your list. Uh, for those of you who are new, the list would have been things created in day one through ten. So the the way this course works is it's about action. You have to do things to be successful in the course. If you do the work, if you do the task, I can guarantee you you'll be more successful than if you don't do them. And there are people who surprise themselves. There are folks who are still in shock at what they've been able to accomplish in these last, well, it's really been about 25, maybe 30 days because I stopped doing weekends because people were getting behind. And there was a, a few days that I had to not do the webinar. But essentially, you have a bunch of people who've made way past $2,500 in less than 30 days. That is freaking awesome. So this is one of the core things that, you know, this is this is kind of this is a hybrid of my military training. And I, I'll actually delve into that a little deeper. When I was going through 92 Bravo, which is a medical laboratory specialist in San, uh, San, yeah, San Antonio, Texas, we had things called crucials. They were tested. If you didn't pass, you went down the hill and became a 91 Alpha. So that's why they were called crucial. And it was practical exams and it was written exams. So essentially, you had to get the written knowledge and maintain that knowledge to pass a test. And another part of the test was you actually had to physically do things in the laboratory. I thought it was great training and it's something that I've implemented in many areas of my life because it, you can have, because there's two, there's, there's two people out there. There are people who do really bad at tests. And there are people who do phenomenally well at tests. There are people who cannot read, but can grasp concepts and actually do things with their hands and make processes. So that's a form of genius if you didn't know. If you have someone who can't read, but they can figure stuff out and build, there's this, this, this used to be very common in our country. Literacy was, and to a degree, is still a huge problem. But you have people who couldn't read that bought houses, raised families, sent their kids to college. Now you have people who can read, who have one to two or three degrees, and they're living at home with their parents. So if you had to have one of those skill sets, you're better off being able to do stuff than to know stuff. I need your word. Yes, we say a pledge every day. A pledge to make myself better today than I was yesterday. Day by day, I will become the hustler I know I can be. I am all in. One of your tasks today is you're going to start a diary. If you've never done one before, it's going to be a little weird. And we're going to call it a life journal. It's not going to be so much about your business. It's going to be about what everything that encompasses your life. I actually have oh, kind of like, you know, I put my life on video a lot. 
So there's a lot of stuff that I'm doing. I got a new project that I'm going to start probably tomorrow. But this will give you depth, insight into who you are. Because we live in a society where many things are thrown at you. You are spending so much of your time in a reactionary posture that your thinking skills aren't what they should be because you spend more time reacting than you do thinking. When you start thinking, when you spend most of your time thinking, the world is going to look very different to you because some of the things that you that make sense when you're in the reactionary mode will not make any sense to you when you're in the thinking mode. You're know, like, did I do that? You know, Urkel moment. I mean, seriously, it's just so many things because this is the process that I became a writer. Uh, after the divorce and the breakup and stuff, I, I was a wounded puppy, so I went out and joined the men's group. And one of the facilitators was like, Cameron, 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 it's going to come out destructively. It's going to come out constructively, but it's coming out, buddy. And it was true. So I, I used to write all these dark and ugly things. And it was very, very helpful because in your mind, you spend that stuff over and over and over. And you need some kind of outlet to get it out because it's just going to do some damage up there. But through that exercise, I learned a lot about myself. And it put me back, oddly enough, where I wanted to be when I was 11. I told one of my uncles I wanted to be an entrepreneur at 11. And, you know, I, I didn't get support. I didn't get any support there. But I had to go through this exercise to examine myself and get back to what I really wanted to do. Because once I became an entrepreneur, hustler, what have you, and then when I became good at it, I became very happy because that's what I wanted to do. You know, what you may want to do is totally different. But the thing is, when you get to that space where you're living your life of design and intent, you have a totally, totally different outlook on life. You have more energy and you have something that is very, very hard to come by. And it's hard to come by because you can't find it. You have to generate it. It's called contentment. That is something that you develop. Contentment, happiness, joy. Those are things that you manufacture by creating a life of design and intent. You make that stuff. It doesn't just walk up to your door. Hello, I'm your little friend called Contentment. No, it doesn't work like that. You have to make it. And that's why so many people can't find it because they don't realize. And this goes back to thinking. They have to make it because it's not out there. It's in here. It's in your inner self. And when you get to thinking and start working on that stuff, because happiness is a byproduct of action. Joy is a byproduct of action. Contentment is a byproduct of action. When I was a kid, I used to have this incredible pride because when I would cut the lawn, we had Bermuda grass. It was very thick. And when you cut it, the lawn would be like, Zzz. just when I got finished with our lawn, especially the backyard, it looked like a golf course. I was so freaking proud of that because it was something that I did. Contentment is a byproduct of doing stuff, not sitting at home, hoping and wishing and praying for stuff. Today is day 21. Your life's about to be very different. Uh, if you've been here, you know, like I said, when I gave everyone the, you know, give yourself the congratulatory pat on the back. If you've been here from the beginning and, you know, for those of you who are new, you can sign up for the course and you can start from the beginning. You are a different cat right now. You're a different breed of cat because at this point, if you've been here and you've done the exercises, you've become a person of action. Action will solve many, many issues in your life. It will solve poverty. It will solve a lack of contentment. It will solve, I mean, action will solve so many things. So your, your mind is your mind space, your mindset, all that stuff is being overridden. You're formatting a new you. And it's about to um, get a little bit better. You think much differently than you did before. We're going to enhance the process. Now, this is really cool stuff that you're seeing. If you don't know what it is, it is vintage <clears throat> distillery equipment. And I came across some in a storage unit, and the guy was a moonshiner. Now, 
it didn't look like that because it was not assembled and people saw that it was copper and you know people were just like actually the bidding went pretty hot because folks just like well the scrap metal and there was other things in there but I knew what it was. I was like, that's a, that's a distillery. And there was some moonshine in, a, in the unit, quite a bit, really. And the stuff was actually pretty smooth. So I may do that story on YouTube one day. But the guy knew what he was doing. The stuff was smooth. But it had some kick. And there's no telling how long it was in that unit. Because um, there was a lot of antiques and things in there. But yes, Cooter was a moonshiner. But when you start to distill, because that's where we are now, you're distilling a lot of your thought processes, you're distilling a lot of your mindsets, you're coming up with a pure thought process. It's cleaner. It's Because this is the thing, action, like the last exercise from day 20, with that amount of time, you don't have time to put a lot of fluff in your business. It's like, what's going to work? What's going to work? You, it, it really pushes you forward, and it exposes a lot of stuff that you thought to be true or necessary. It's really not true or necessary. And we're about, like I said, we're going to crank it up. Because uh, this actually, I emailed someone, and uh, <clears throat> this person is doing really well with their business. And... The only thing that's really different with that person and their business is the mindset. That's it. That's it. Nothing else. Same town, same person, just a new mindset and a few tools of action. That's it. I really believe this person's probably going to do 2,500 in sales of their product. I really do. And it's just, it's just, I'm really tickled because... There's a lot of people in this situation that they are looking at the world through a perspective that hasn't been groomed. One of the things I learned as an outside salesman was the questions you didn't know to ask were the ones that bit you in the ass. So when you don't even know the right questions to ask, you're already lost. And that kind of goes back to thinking and that goes back to a financial education. When, you know, going back to what I said about the person who couldn't read but built a life, yet there are people who are extremely educated who cannot support themselves. These folks have absorbed certain notions of society that they believe to be true, but they're not. Uh, in 2009, I did a video call degree myth and I got a lot of conjecture and derision on Facebook from my friends this was 2009 this is this was when the recession was really starting I can put that video up on my page and no one says nothing now because the empirical evidence not just me the empirical evidence has said um that's not as necessarily true and a lot of people are actually in a worse position for going to school and once again let's look at the two concepts here because this will be very relevant for this. Relevant for this. Going to school and doing well and getting a high GPA is one form of work. You go to school, you do the work. You hire. I mean, it's an it's an accomplishment. It's an accomplishment. But the other side is: will that accomplishment, will that work, yield you the life you want? And many people are finding out the answer to that question is no. So it isn't like you didn't work hard and you didn't earn your degree and you didn't do the right thing. It's the effort that you poured into that hole will not reward you the rest of your life because the world has changed. 1920 to 1992, yeah, go to school, get a degree, bam, people were just going to hire you. Oh, you got a degree? We're going to hire you. It worked. With the emphasis being on the word, it worked. But once again, going back to your diary, when you start to think and you start to analyze and you start to really, really look at the world from a different perspective, you are going to see trends as they happen versus you looking at the world at the way that you want it to be. You're going to see a lot of things that, whoa, this is changing. I mean, I so dropped out of school my junior year was able to figure out that going to school by taking time, putting numbers to paper. While I was in that boarding house, in that room, it wasn't the way for me. 
but I did analysis. I didn't go, well, you know, I'm not going to, no, I sit there and I'm like, calculate the cost. It's like, where am I going to get the money? How much time am I going to lose being out of the workforce? What, I mean, qual there's so many things that I factored into it. And also, this was 1999. My trajectory of getting undergrad and going to medical school, it was a six-year process. So let's really do that math. Say I started in 2000, six-year process. I finished in 2006. What happened in 2009? I would have been coming into, argumentally, one of the worst job markets in our, in our lifetimes. The worst job market. So I would have did all that for six years, worked hard, did what I needed to do, and maybe had a year or two of prosperity. Because, the, the, you know, was the, the field I was going into got just totally ramshacked by this recession. So in hindsight, going against the grain, doing my, you know, and this, this was from my life. Everyone's going to have a different path. I set myself up for success by not doing what was conventionally thought to be the best way to go. If I went that way, I might be living at home with a relative or I'm, I mean, I don't think good things would have happened if I had capitulated and went for the commonly accepted thing to do. And that's one of the common, that's a common tenement in my life. I get a lot of pushback on some of my thought processes, some of the things that I put out, but time and time and time again, it works, you know, because I don't, um, this is another mind trick. Never, ever try to prove people wrong. Don't even worry about that. Spend your time proving your ideas, your concepts right. Because trying to prove people wrong, you're running on some tainted fuel. You're running on fuel that once you prove them wrong, you run out. Don't ever worry about trying to prove people wrong. Try to prove yourself right. It's a cleaner fuel, it's more sustaining, it refills itself, it gives you energy, and it takes a lot of external forces out of the equation. Because when you're operating on internal power, or perpetual power, that's something that you control, and that's something you groom, and that's something you can build over and over and over. This is something else that I do. And, you know, I'm talking about a lot of things that I really didn't think were real special, but in doing this course, I'm finding out um, they are. Most mornings, not every morning, but most mornings, I start my day with this. Today is going to be a great day. Even before I got to bed, just, just, just mentally say that. Don't even say it out loud. Just mentally say it. And I've been doing that for the last 15, 16 years. I'm just tell myself, it's going to be a good day. I don't care if I wake up and my knee's driving. I find some way to push forward to that good day because... One of the things I learned when I had a job was misery is contagious. It does not take much for an ounce of misery to go out and beckon a pound of misery. It, it is really amazing how we are wired as organic carbon-based life forms that it doesn't take much to get us down. It doesn't take much to get us happy. That's why crowd mania is so dangerous. Like, you got a crowd of people, someone can yell fire and everyone will feel panic whether there's a fire or not. That's just how we're groomed. So you have to spend a lot of time counteracting the power of negative energy that will just, it's everywhere. It's, you know, you turn on television, you go out in traffic, someone cuts you, it's everywhere. So you have to work to actively to push your happiness bucket on a frequent basis. So each morning. Just five minutes a day. Have a conversation with yourself like, today is going to be good. I'm going to make that sale. And this is something else. And this comes back to the power of your subconscious mind by Dr. Joseph E. Murray and some early Tony Robbins stuff. People do not mess with me like they used to mess with me. Because I don't think that people are going to mess with me. And I get a lot of uh, pushback from my other friends who happen to have the same skin color because I got into an argument with something because I've yelled at the cop before and people are like, oh God, you can't yell at the cop. It's black, man. You're going to end up dead. It, what you believe is super important. It is super important. And 
we all, I urge everyone to get that book, The Power of the Subconscious Mind, and read it and really, really go through the concepts because once you read that book and you understand some other things, you're going to work very, very hard to keep negative thoughts out of your mind. You're going to work really hard, really, really, really hard because of the damaging effects that those things have. But when you start thinking like that and you start thinking, okay, today's going to be a good day, you start filling your life with a positive aspect that you will start to repel negative people. In the beginning, you're going to have to work hard to get them out of your life, but it's just going to pull. They just will not show up in your life. They just will not. They just Once you start doing this stuff, they're just not going to come around because it's just like you're going to repel them because you're polar. It's just, they're not going to, it's just, it's weird. It's hard to even quantify that. I was getting my vehicle detailed the other day. And this guy, we just started talking, and he's actually someone I'm going to end up doing business with. It's just, that just happens over and over again, because you've positioned yourself to accept those type of things in your life. Now, when you don't do these five minutes a day, and you don't think about positive things, and you don't meditate, you leave your life open for anything to pop in it. Because you're not grooming your yard, you're not watering your, your, your garden, you're not you know, putting fertilizer on your flowers. So... Any random thing can happen. Sometimes these random things that happen can be good. Sometimes these random things that can happen can be devastating. But this is the reason I would say not because, you know, things happen. You, you know, you can't plan for a cataclysmic event. You can't plan for it. But 92, 95% of my days go as planned. And I think if you really do the work and look at your life, most days go as you think they're going to go good or bad. So you have to assume the best. Now, what's really cool about this is if I had started off 30 days to 2,500 with this, I would have been doing you a disservice because that this is more of that namby-pamby, just mm, kumbaya, you know, you think good things. That works to a degree. But see, this is the rub. If you're here and you've done day one through 20 and you're now an action-based person, this has much more validity because now you have physical reps in your soul of doing things and seeing good outcomes. So when you marry that action with the positive affirmation, it really cranks it up because even the positive affirmation, I won't totally poo poo it. They work to a degree. But when you put action to them, it's like taking firecrackers, dipping them in gas the night before you set them off. It just amplifies the effect to a large magnitude. Now, this is something else. We're in the social media world. If you're a Facebook friend of mine, you know that I rarely put negative stuff on my page. And it's for a reason. Facebook can be a struggle. There are so many things that I come across that I read and I make. And I'm even careful not to comment because the way Facebook works, if you comment or like something, it throws it up in your feed. There are so many things that I see that are just so bad that I, I can't comment, I can't like it, I can't share it because I don't want to be a carrier pigeon of misery. And I just see so many things. I'm just like, it's just horrible, horrible, horrible. Now, I will put something up that needs, I think, you know, the attention, like what happened with uh, those two young men in Florida who just got shot by two crazy racist people for just breathing. To me, that is unconscionable. I'll talk about some stuff like that. But um, the twerking, because I think I'm guilty. I put up one twerking video because it was this cat that was twerking. I really avoid that stuff because it is so easy to get sucked into it that you, that's all you're posting. I have people on my, my friends list. That's all they post. I don't know why they're posting it. I don't know. Maybe they're making them feel, feel better. Maybe they're depressed. I don't know what it is, but... I've actually blocked some of their feeds. You know, we're still friends, but I just don't see that stuff because I know it's not good for my mental environment. Because, once again, the negativity aspect is so easy to get sucked into. And it's a fight. So, one of the things that you can do, because your Facebook page is just that, is create a safe haven for positive thoughts or happy thoughts. I can be depressed I can be getting my ass kicked by life and you will never
never see me post that stuff on Facebook because that's one of the things about I got from Lee Defield or Nightingale. Um, what's the point in sharing your misery with folks who don't care? I mean, I'm real personal. Like, I don't have my kids on my Facebook page. Uh, when my mother passed, I didn't put that on my Facebook page. When France, I, I think I put some of that on a Facebook page because I changed my my social media policy because typically there's only going to be a handful of people who are going to truly care. Now, everyone may have empathy for you because you're going through a bad situation, but your friends are going to hurt with you. And you're going to get more, I think, in my you know, opinion, more benefit from keeping those tragic events off of Facebook and dealing with your tribe of folks who are going to be there for you, who are actually going to come to your house and bring you some cookies or going to take you out to get a drink. I think that's just going to be way more powerful than creating these tertiary relationships on Facebook that, you know, oh, 150 people like what you put up. Big whoop. Do they know you? If you die tomorrow, would they care? You know, you have to really, really think about it. And this goes back to building a life of design and intent. So get in the habit of just putting positive or newsworthy things. And there's going to be a little fuckery. Okay, Facebook just promotes fuckery. It's hard to get away from. But if you can keep your page 90% positive and 10% fuckery, I think that's a win. I think that's a win. <laughs> oh, yeah. For those of you who are new here, we do stuff. Uh, this is one of your tasks. Call up 10 people and tell them something outstanding about themselves today. Yes, 10 people. Don't Doesn't matter who it is. The mama, it could be your principal. It could be Fudu the dog. It could be uh, whoever. Just like, hey, this is Glennon. And uh, I was just thinking about you today. And, you know, I noticed that you have amazing penmanship. Or you really have a way with people. Or... Whatever it is, even if it's a little thing, amplify it and just spread that. You'll be amazed how you feel when you're done. So that's, yeah, that's that's what you're doing today. Ten people. It could be strangers. It could be anybody. But ten. Now we're going to fill up your power tank. Because the thing is, people are more powerful than they really know. And a lot of reasons, and once again... Going back to the negativity. That stuff robs you of so much energy. It robs you of time and it robs you of critical thought process. Powering up is taking ownership of your mental space. Right now, the TV may own your mind or um, the internet may own your mind or there, there, there's a lot of things that may own your mind and you may not even be aware of it and you need to take it back. Now, Going back to what I was talking about with the five minutes, and this is a repeat because I, I, I tend to repeat that because when you repeat something over and over again, it tends to stick more so than just saying it once. But one small positive thought in the morning can change your day. Just like one negative small thought. Have you ever woke up in a bad mood and went to work and it just got worse and then worse? And, I mean, at the end of the day, you were just emotionally drained. Just drained. And you went home and you were just like, oh, it's a bad day. You talked to your friends or you talked to your girlfriends or you talked to your family. And you just went on and on and on and on. Do you know that you had a lot of control in that? I'm not talking about you go to work and a doctor calls you and says, oh, yeah, you have cancer. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you woke up, you stubbed your toe. It was something really little, not life-threatening, and it mushroomed. Just totally mushroomed. And you, you may even call in sick the next day because you felt so bad. Because people do not own their mental environments. They let other things own them. When you start owning your mental environment, and this is something that I learned from working in healthcare. Uh, there was this guy, I'm going to call him Abe, because I think you can't mention people's names. But he was, uh, he was, a, he was a prisoner of war. Uh, he was in one of the concentration camps. He had the numbers, tattoos, all this other stuff. Old dude, I think when I met him, he was like 90-something. Dude had inoperable cancer. Tumors everywhere. I was in the room when they were like looking at his x-rays. I mean, they were everywhere. Metatized bones. I mean, it, his brain, it was everywhere. Dude would talk to you and just start coughing up blood. So you had to just understand this guy was in an incredible amount of pain. 
I would go see him, do what I needed to do, and every day he greeted me with a smile. He was positive. He was upbeat. And this man knew he was dying because I think um, he lasted three weeks after my first meeting with him. But it just left a remarkable impression on me because, you know, that's one of the reasons, like, when I was, like, want to get down and out or, you know, there's some bullshit on the internet, and I was like, yeah, I'm good. And then it's about building perspective. You And that's one of the things, you know, when you build a kingdom in a thimble, your perspective is myopic. Expand your perspective, expand your life, expand your joy. Now, <laughs> I had to do it. I had to do it. I saw it. It's like, if you notice how people who don't really care, bitches or assholes, whatever you want to use, that if they have a work ethic, they get stuff done. I work with this guy named Mason. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I couldn't stand his ass. He was one of the most productive people I've ever met in my life. He can get done in one day, and this is not an exaggeration, what other salespeople got done in a week. He would do that. But he was relentless. He worked 20-hour days. He was crazy. But... I realized that when you stop caring what people think about you on a mundane level, you know, he did care deeply what people thought about him. Actually, when I really got to know him, he was extremely sensitive. He got stuff done, and I had to really appreciate that by him. I was like, he got stuff done. If you want, if you were like needed to do a deal in LA, you could say, Mason, I don't know anyone in LA. Give him an hour if he had the time, and he would come back to you. Well, oh, this guy is doing this. Dude was, it was ridiculous. And when I stopped hating, and when I stopped being mad, because he's riding my ass, actually, he was my boss, he was riding my ass, I started to appreciate the process. Because if you work with this guy and you just watch what he did, and if you only did 25% of what he did, you're going to make six figures. That's what a mentor he was. And you you really, really have to become action-based. Just really, I can't impress that on you enough. And after you do your positive affirmation saying your day is going to start off well, start each day with the power of six. Unless it's your off day, and I'm going to talk about that. You should take days off as an entrepreneur. Seven days a week, it sounds great. Sounds like you're dedicated you can put yourself in an early grave by doing the power of six, by having a process, by building a life of design and intent. You don't have to work seven days a week. That is something I discovered with my internet business. It was just, you know, it was a strange revelation because if you look at my past, I grew up in Alabama, a very conservative little town. Men get haircuts and they go to work. So I've had this work ethic since I was six. And it's just like, okay, you don't deserve to rest unless you have done work. I had to eradicate that out of my mind. It was a long struggle. Because once you fully understand design, intent, and processes, you can have a million dollar, a billion dollar company and you're not working seven days a week because you're leveraging your time. You're putting in processes. You're bringing, you're building teams. Because Mason, who did work seven days a week, you know, eventually he that stopped when he got married and had kids. But when you really start to understand how this thing works, universal law, the power of your thoughts, it's like just so it was just amazing. And it's just like if I had gotten this stuff when I was like 15, <clears throat> totally different life, totally different life. If I understood this stuff when I was 15, totally different life. So. Understand, you need to take days off. You do, because what it's going to do is going to recharge you. It's going to make you fresher. And this is the beauty of, you know, having your own business. Your day can be off on Wednesday if you want it. Your day can be off on Monday. Your day can be whatever. Because once this course is over, I'm going back to my cushy schedule of two to three hours a day, which will be probably two hours of writing, a lot of emails. And I don't really, you know, the video production, let's just say, Say four hours a day, five hours a day, I'll do a video. It is the freedom is so priceless 
That's why I value freedom over money. And a lot of people don't understand that because everyone wants me to do more. And it's like, well, if you do this, you can make more, more money. And I'm like, okay, why am I making more money? Design and intent is you don't do stuff just to do stuff. Because I'm going to tell you, skill sets, relationships, building things are more important than money. Because when you have those, you can always get money. Something else that I haven't really pushed, but I really think I did you a disservice because maybe this should have been the beginning. But you need to start walking an exercise program five days a week. You need to get off your butt, go for a walk for 30 minutes, an hour, something. Because this is going to promote happiness. This is going to promote health. And when you're out walking, you're going to come up with ideas to improve your business. At least I did. It's amazing how many times that I'm just, oh, oh, and just ideals galore. <clears throat> because it opens up, your, it distracts you, your mind or something. I haven't quite figured it out. But I know for my whole life that I've gotten a great many ideals walking. Uh, this course came to me while I was walking. So it's something because you need it. Because if you are an internet entrepreneur, it means you're sitting on your butt most of the time. You know, I would even go a step further if you really want to enhance, because I'm looking at doing this myself. Because I was continuing to walk, but there's, a, you know, getting a walking desk or a treadmill desk where you're just standing up and you're walking all day, like two miles an hour, something like that. You know, so you may do four or five miles a day. It will help you improve your posture because, once again, living a life of design and intent is making sure that the machine that houses your brain is doing well because we're living into our 90s. I suspect that, you know, people in my group, because I feel like very fortunate, we're going to be part of the folks who are going to experience made-to-order organs. I know it sounds crazy, but they're going to take some of your DNA, put it in a dish, and they're going to grow you a new pancreas. And they're going to grow you a new liver. And they're going to grow you new lungs. So you're, this whole thing with rejection is going to go away. That's happening in our lifetime. You know, you're going to see people living 140, 150, 160 years old. And the people, what? Yeah. Because you're going to be able to replace the machine with better parts or newer parts organically. We're going to see that. And it's going to be amazing. So the sooner you start taking care of that machine, it's just going to be easier to keep it going. And there's all kinds of stuff, like I don't even talk about that, I read about in terms of medicine and things. But you, you, you will have people 140, 150 years old. It's coming. And I'm talking about perfect health, clarity, still having sex. I guess, you know, in 40 years, the, uh, the new, the new 30 is going to be 70. <laughs> I know, man, it's a brave new world. All right. Bring the pain. You're going to do one thing in your bucket list tonight, tomorrow, or soon. And if you don't have a bucket list, because I know someone's like, oh, I don't have a bucket list. Well, guess what? You're going to write one because you have a two-part. You're going to write your bucket list. And what's the bucket list? It's things you want to do but you've never done before. When you put stuff on the list and you create a goal, it has there's just a much greater chance of this stuff happening than not. So this is another thing that you're going to do. Bucket list. Pull one of those things off. It could be simple, or you can add a new item on your bucket list to do for this task. It can be something really, really simple. Because 30 days to $2,500 is more than about making money. It's expanding who you are as a person and creating a greater life overall. Because if you're making 60000 a year, let's say that, and you're extremely happy, you're wealthy. Because there are people who are making a million a year and they're miserable. Because money is not going to solve the happiness quote. Now, I understand money solves a lot of problems. But when you do not work on that internal stuff, you can win the lottery tomorrow and coke out this weekend. Because you're trying to solve those internal issues that money is not going to solve. So, bucket list items. Working on your relationships. Being a better person. That's going to solve that stuff. So, once again, if you do not have a bucket list, you're writing one today. Oh, there's more. Immediately after this webinar, yes, immediately, because maybe you have business, you're going to make 20 sales calls. If you don't have the phone numbers, you're going to personally craft 20 emails. They're going to be personal. It's going to be situated, like say you were selling giraffes. Okay? You're going to like the guy who bought the pink giraffe. It's like, hey, you bought the pink giraffe, and I was looking in my inventory, and I have another one. And, you know, I'll make you an incredible deal. 
you're going to move product tonight. You're going to make these 20 sales calls. You're going to put out offers. You're going to, you know, sweeten the deal. You're going to do something to make some money tonight. Because once again, this course is action-based. By doing this stuff, you move your business forward. You move your life forward. And booyah. <laughs> All righty then. <clears throat> we have uh, a serious goof up. I don't know why I didn't do that. I, I want to apologize. Uh, there's new screen. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. This is this is crazy. I don't. Uh, I'm telling you, the daylight saving time is really, really screwing me. Okay, um, what I'm gonna do since I have um, totally, totally screwed up, um, I'm gonna answer the questions. And what I can do is because this is I did record this. I don't. I'm real. I'm telling you, daylight time really screws me up. I really am sorry about that. Uh, what I can do is play the thing if you want. And I'll just let you know, if you want to stay, I'll do that. Uh, wow. <laughs> I'm telling you, I struggle with this every year. Oh, man, sorry about that. Well, at least you can hear me. Thank God you can hear me. Uh, that's good. Yeah, I screwed up big time. Yep, 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 I screwed up. Fortunately for those, no, I didn't mean I screwed up. I did not, in my process of setting everything up, I get a little loopy when uh, daylight saving times comes around. It messes with me, seriously. Nope, nope, nope. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, well, thanks for staying with me. <laughs> Good Lord. All right. This is what I'm talking about. When I say mistakes happen, I make mistakes. I'm sorry about that. Uh, let's see. Dwayne, a doctorate in bathtub history, useless, but experience in bathtub restore, restoration, priceless. Think antique claw foot folk, uh, foot toe, claw foot toes, folks. Not the half ass coating, but actual restoration. <clears throat> wow. True. Uh, Dwayne, yes, misery is contagious. I work with a guy who's caring for his mom with al Alzheimer's. He's so beat down that everything is a bad day, a bad moment, etc. I feel him, but, fun that for, but for some days, I find myself catching the blues. It's very powerful. Misery is. Uh, power of six again. Simple, easy tip. Yep. Uh, Dwayne, totally different life if you get into this info at 15 years of age. That's a big motive for me as my youngest son is my helper on job sites. And I'm able to engage with him on some of these tasks as I work through them. Hey, if I'm totally following my face, but my son figures this out, I'm all in just for that. I mean, it, it, it really does make a difference. It, it really, really does. Now, the cool thing is, for those of you who are, it's recorded. This will be in Hustle University and 30 days to $2,500. Like I said, I really apologize for that. That was just stupid on my part. <laughs> Uh, Corey, it just made me focus more. Tony Marshall, I thought it was me because I was making groceries. Okay, people, you know, at least you can listen. Thank, thank God that happened. Um, oh, this is cute. Hey, hey, it's free. Did we get our money back? <laughs> Oh, dang, Hector. Hey, Glendon, have you talked about the stories people tell themselves to keep them where they are, like the ones you tell yourself about daylight savings time? Uh, actually, no, that's not, that's weird. Like, actually, we talked about that earlier about 
your peak hours, like I'm a morning person and that's when I am very productive. And this has been like this for years. Sometimes I can push past it, but it, I don't, since I was a kid, actually be honest with you, I hate daylight savings time. I wish we didn't do it. It doesn't make any sense to me, but, um, it creates a problem for me. Uh, cause I'm a person that believes in biorhythms and it just does. It just, I hate it. I totally hate it. Uh, I'm not gonna say mistakes happen, but I wrote everything down. Cool. <clears throat> uh, Chris, good point. I've been trying to prove to my ex she made a mistake, but today's onwards. I'm gonna live my life on purpose, intent, not to prove her wrong, but to move my life forward. Thank you, Glenda, for making that distinction. Yeah, because a lot of times you're you're running on tainted fuel trying to prove someone wrong. Oh, I'm gonna prove you wrong. No, 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 no. If you live a really good life and you're happy, they're gonna know. They're going to know. And the thing is, they may never ever sell you, tell you, but it's going to hurt. Uh, Tony, I did, I once did perhaps my best radio show on WCLK in Atlanta to 15 minutes of dead air before the station director called me and let me know I wasn't air. I feel your pain. At least this is recorded. <laughs> uh, power six is a productivity exercise. Jasmine. Uh, just flash up the slides because I talked for like 40 minutes so it, it would be out of sync Chris I still can't nail that damn dive Glendon damn it why'd you bring that middle exercise up in your video <laughs> it's a trip uh, Edward Glendon I've been taking pictures of each page that you put up during the webinar if you let each slide start from being I can snap a shot to follow up with my notes um, you're going to get it in Hustle University, because like I said, once I'm done, this the, re the recording will be up tonight. Uh, Catherine, it was easy to follow you, even though I did not see the slides. Wow. Alicia moved to AZ. We don't do daylight savings time. Neither did Hawaii. I love that. They didn't do it in Hawaii. Uh, David, do a lot of people normally flake out with Craigslist transition uh, transactions? How do you? Not let it get you down and trying to meet up with people. I made a few big bucks cleaning out some stuff, which is cool with a dealer reseller. Uh, I can just go ahead and give you 30, 40% of the people, depending on what you sell. It's going to be 20, like electronics, high demand electronics. You know, if the price is right, a lot of people are not going to flake out on you. But regular stuff, your flake out rate can be 50%. It's just, just look at it as a part of business. It's not personal. They're just, they may have found what they wanted already and they're just not going to be considerate. It's, it just happens. It just happens. Uh, Dwayne, yes, biorhythms are a big thing. It's real. I'm an old guy. It took a long time to figure out. You do have peak hours, peak days. <clears throat> yeah, it, it's weird because uh, we were talking about that this weekend, how it just threw me off. <clears throat> uh, Michael, what TED, talk, what TED Talk books do you recommend? I recommend Sir Ken Robinson, everything he's done. How Schools Kill Creativity, and Barry Swartz, The Paradox of Choice. <laughs> Dwayne, that was a test for a while, no slides, we had to visualize. No, I goofed up. I did not hit the right button. Sorry about that. Uh, it takes me a week to get into it, and then I'm fine. I don't know why it just does. Uh, Craigslist, yeah, folks are just window shopping on CL, so plan on half of the responses just to be random. Yeah, it, it's just it's just kind of part of the beast. I think in the beginning I was pissed, and my partner would talk about it, but we just you know as uh, Dominic said, embrace the uh, daylight savings time. We just embrace Craigslist. We was like. The more we listed, the more money we made. It just was that simple. And it in the book, uh, Pimping Craigslist for Fun and Profit. Let's see. You know, yeah, this I'll do this. Hold on one second. You're gonna because I'm not sending this out, but I figured out how I can uh, I can do this. Products. Let's 
what I will do. So this is why I love Gumroad, because you can do stuff like this. Let's go back. Come on back. Let's see. All right. So that's what I need to do. This is the beauty of Gumroad. 30 day snafu. <laughs> Since I screwed up, this is what I'll do. So, this is, you're going to have to copy and paste. Uh, I guess you can't copy and paste, but everybody that's here since I screwed up, if you go ahead and do that, I will give you the Craigslist book free. Uh, what else? Because I'm working on that again because I was going to redo it. But let's see. Go here. I will put it back up because people, let's see what's in there. Yeah, you'll get all that stuff for free since I screwed up. Okay, so this is what you need. Oops, oops, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Close tabs, close tabs, back to options, and damn. So you go ahead and you, you do that in 30 day snafu and you get it for free. I'll leave it up as we finish this up. Susan says, Glendon. Susan! <laughs> uh, Craigslist, uh, actually, since I'm giving the, the books away for free, that information is in the book. So just go ahead and download that because once this webinar is over, I'm, I'm getting rid of that link. So get it while you can. <clears throat> Let's see. Dwayne, I started posting funny, humorous Craigslist ads with the caveat that the first person here with cash gets it, and it helped a lot. I give folks a day and time range, and the first person up a driveway cash gets the item. Add something unusual to the ad. I put down that folks interested in the last item had to bring me a six-pack of Coke, and I sold it and got the Coke. Yeah, because I, I, uh, I will say something a little different about that. I use Craigslist to sell my erotica books, and... Distinct ads help out tremendously. I'm probably going to show that process in Hustle University when I finish this, when I get back to the making of digital products. But you know, what you say is very, very true. An unusual ad with a different hook works wonders. It, it's amazing the power of Craigslist when you have the right information. So uh, thanks for adding that. Hello, Sue. <laughs> Susan. Hey, Susan. All right. So, all right. I'm, I'm going to lead this up here. You gotta you gotta type it in, but yeah. Since I screwed up, uh, I will just because there's more to it than that. You can just go ahead and get that for free. Everyone that's here now, what I'm gonna do once I end this webinar, that link's gonna disappear. I'm gonna delete it because you know a lot of people like to share for their friends because I know I got the download of one book. There was way more people than showed up at the webinar, and I was like, ah, people are sharing. So self-preservation. <laughs> uh tim i'm up looking to upload about 100 ties can you recommend any sources to sell it that is that question is too generic there's a lot more to it than that what do you mean the link isn't working it should be working hold on it's working yeah it's working. You probably see because the thing is you, you got to type it in just like that. I'm not sending out on the email. I learned my lesson. What I'll do in the future is just put it up on the screen and let you get it immediately. That way only the folks who show up will get it because, you know, your folks are so kind and helpful to share. And, you know, I even talk about that. I don't really care about you sharing. That's not the problem. The thing is the folks, if they didn't come, they're typically not going to use the information anyway. That's the problem. Oh, there's more questions. Uh, Danica, link works for me. Link works just fine. Uh, I believe that is an I. Hector. Jasmine. Ooh, free stuff. I showed up today. <laughs> oh, man, that's thick. Isaiah. 
know. I think listen. I think people are confusing the one with an I. It's uh, I believe that's either an I or one G A X E thirty day snafu. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Do 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 do. Once again, that should help. So I just sent the link to everybody that's here. You should be able to click on it, I think. Uh, Jasmine, yeah, you, I don't, you may not have enough room on your phone. There's a lot of files with that. You're welcome, Alex. Actually, Hector says, actually, it's an L. It's a lowercase L. Uh, yeah, people are downloading it, so it works. Okay, so it is 4.55, so that is my uh, apology for my snafu. <laughs> I still like, <laughs> feeling kind of goofy I did that, but yeah, that's, yeah, it's been a, it's been a interesting day. I'm not going to say it's been a rough day, because I actually had to take a nap, but um, yeah, this happens every year. It just happens every year. It's weird. Even when I forget about it, it's... Actually, I wasn't expecting it because uh, they like to say it, um, it happened and yesterday it threw me off and the day I was thrown off. I don't even think about it. It just happens. But that's why I put in the course about biorhythms and peak hours and stuff. This is real. It's very real. Ross the Boss. I like that name. Uh, DST screws people up. Lots of facilities right after the change for pedestrians. Wow. I didn't know that. Hector, are you want to make any mistakes tomorrow? <laughs> uh, David, I always warn people to be careful on foot traffic in daylight savings time. Uh, it's uh, I sent it out through the question system here. Sent it to everybody, so you should be able to click. I'll leave it up for uh, to five o'clock, and actually, let's see, I will. Send it out to everyone again. I just sent it to everyone. And you should be able to get it. But yeah, so that way I won't, you know, you got something out of this for more than just the uh, the audio. Then, and I'm going to leave this up because, like I said, I'm recording this. So this the, that part's good because that's one of the reasons that I switched away from the recording system of GoToWebinar because... 90 something percent of the time it worked, but I had a few times where it just didn't work at all. And it was just like I had to redo stuff, and that is a pain. So I'm checking, I'm checking, I'm checking. No more questions. Danica, I can't wait till you mess up again. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. That really is. All right, so uh, I will do this for the folks who want to sign up for the full course. It's right here. Uh, that 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 really doesn't change. You should be able to click that, and bam, that goes to what we're doing now. It'll do the same thing tomorrow. Also, for get back. If you want to sign up for 30 days to 2500 like I said, I need to, there's no longer a month to month. I removed that. I'm just going strictly lifetime access only. That's the only way you can get in to 30 days to 2500 And then we'll probably do something different with Hustling University coming up. But that's, it's under every video because I will show you something pretty freaking neat. And this is why I'm glad I stuck with YouTube. Uh, let's see. I will flash back. Everybody should be able to get to the thing. Because like I said, I'll leave it up for a minute. But see, this is the beauty. Like, I'll talk about this a little bit more. But this is one of the really nifty features of YouTube. Like, okay, this used to be a pain. And I had an assistant would do this stuff for me. But all of that stuff that's called under the video is called a description. It used to be if you want to change all of it, you had to go in and manually change each one. But thanks to YouTube, I can do this and I can go to description and set to whatever. And it changes the description of 1,020 videos. That is freaking awesome. 
And this is one of the things about like sticking with stuff and not jumping around because if I had like abandoned you, because one time I was real pissed at YouTube. I was like, man, I'm out of here. And then it's like, okay, let's pull the emotion out of it. What's the benefit? The, is the benefit still greater than the pain? Substantially. So I stuck with it. But yeah, I change this every day and I'm going to actually change it in the morning for some other stuff. Uh, the Wayne, yep, mess up big next time. Hector, thanks for your excellent gift and webinar. You're welcome. Thanks for showing up. <laughs> Too bad daylight saving time happens once a year. Bad show. <laughs> yeah, I know y'all loving this. Uh, the Dwayne. I don't know. I'll have to look at that. All right, cool. All right, it's 5 o'clock. Thank you for uh, showing up today. And I will be here tomorrow, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. I will be sharp. And no, that will not happen again tomorrow. First time I really screwed up that bad in 21 days. Okay, happens. All right, this is Glenda. Thanks for coming out. And I will see you on the good side. Start.